Good afternoon, back at the heat pump job. It's all commissioned, it's all working, and the property is getting hot. And how noisy is an air source heat pump? This noisy. Anyone that tells you that heat pumps are noisy, they're talking bullshit. Um, so last video had a couple of comments saying, um, how does the wiring work on something like this? It's actually really, really simple. So the outdoor unit connects via its own breaker. There's a rotary isolator outside on its own breaker, 2.5 mil cable feeding it, um, rubber, Rubber Pond Flex, I think it's called. H-O-N something cable. Um, straight into an isolator, straight into the heat pump. Plugs into the bottom of it. We've got the cable for the instantaneous water heater. Now the tricky thing with these, I don't know what it's like on any other um, models with the backup element. Um, it's a three phase element essentially. So you need a breaker for each leg of the element up to, I think it's 2.3 kilowatts each leg. Um, so you don't really need it, but it's just the way it's configured. It's obviously a, uh, a European thing where they've probably got three phase in most places. So at the minute we've only got one leg of the element connected up, but there's a fault on it from the factory and the mechanical overheat stat, um, it was broken, it wouldn't work. So we've had no electrical backup on this. When it got down to minus five or six, the the unit was struggling for temperature so because um, it's a fairly big house it's probably quite close to the limit of this the capability of the 16 kilowatt unit so it could have done with that extra kick when it got minus five minus six but they got through it i think they were the house was only getting up to 16 17 so with that extra boost it probably would have done it so wiring wise um you got your 2.5 um switch fuse spur to the electronics there you got your low voltage control cables under here. You've got your um, uh, cylinder sensor, outdoor sensor, um, buffer sensor, CAN bus cable that communicates the hydraulic unit to the heat pump, and the purple is the plus bus cable that communicates to the mixer module down there. So the mixer module for the underfloor heating wires like this. The pump goes straight into there on a plug into the EMM1 mixer. The mixer driver goes straight into there on a plug. The only thing you've got to do is orientate the valve and make sure it's turning the right way. It's hard to explain, but it's easy to do once you've got the instructions in your hand. You can figure it out. Um, we've also got another low loss header sensor which feeds into the buffer here. So a 10k NTC feeds back into the EMM1. And then the EMM1 links to this via plus bus and it also picks up 240 volts from the control board in there. Pump for the radiators links into P1 in here. Pump for the secondary return pump links into P2. So you can time your secondary circulation pump. I've just had the um, the, uh, the the water drain, so the pump's a bit noisy. So I cancelled it down just to film this because it's making a right racket because it was full of air doing 2200 you'll hear that kick in now you noisy as sin they're always noisy those pumps for a while uh, and then that's it you turn it on and away you go and uh, yeah we'll just switch to the thermal camera and I'll show you some floor temps as we so here I am standing in the hallway and um, we've got the spreader plate system in the floor you can see where there's a wall there where we couldn't get the spreader plates in. Um, so at the minute we've got a floor temperature of about 22, 23 um, on the spreader plate system. As we go into here, this is a screed system. You gain a couple of degrees by the screed system. So as you can see, the screed system is more efficient. Um, 
get a better average floor temperature with a screeded system. I've got a thermometer here. You can't see it on the infrared, but we've got 20 degrees on it. So room temp 20 degrees. So here's the customer smart meter. Uh, the daily usage on a 16 kilowatt unit up to 21 degrees and it's been sub-zero temperatures um, so averaging about 10 11 pound a day for everything that's heating hot water and the electricity to run a fairly large house so 300 pound a month um, and that's at the very coldest it's ever going to be so we're also upstairs completing the bathrooms as well and it's um, that's the ra radiator for the room in here We've got a flow temperature of about 28, 29, and um, that's the temp, uh, room temp. That's electric underfloor heating in the bathroom. It's not on, but it gives it gives us a room temp in here. 20 degrees, not particularly large radiator. 30 degree water going through it, slightly less. I'm getting 20 degrees. So to all those who say heat pumps don't work, well, they clearly do.